$100,000. Think about that for a moment. How much or what you could do with $100,000. You could buy a pretty fancy electric car or maybe a middle-of-the-road electric car as prices are going. Maybe a destination wedding, something along those lines. Well, unfortunately, if you happen to be in the supply chain domain, that can be a typical cap of a cost to an interruption in your supply chain um, processes and, and network. That's how much a minute of downtime can cost if a freight train were to um, go offline um, or some similar interruption. And it's really remarkable how these small interrupts, when they're amplified, they can affect a complex system in profound ways uh, and just magnify uh, the impact. Um, we're all aware of some of the supply chain um, problems that we've had recently. Um, but similarly, in a hospital where you've got imaging machines, right? These are multi-million dollars, sometimes scores of millions uh, on this imaging technology. If it's down, the hospital is unable to take images and charge for those images and be recouped for that investment. Um, similarly, if you're running a manufacturing line, any interruption to your manufacturing line has an impact on your uh, top and bottom level, uh, bottom line. So it's, it, it's really remarkable how important downtime plays in terms of service delivery. I want to share with you today the concept of service experience management, or what we call SXM, and how it demands visual engagement. I want to talk about how a platform is critical for enterprises that are looking to up-level their service delivery and some of the key personas and use cases that make use of, of this type of platform. I would posit that the way to deploy these types of advanced applications, which are fluid in nature and dynamic in nature, actually demands that you've got a platform to do so. So let's dig into this a little bit. What do we mean by service experience management? It's not gobbledygook. For a moment, let's just think about the combination or the union of service experience and customer experience. Everyone in this room is familiar with customer experience, right? You buy a product or you've got a service, you have an issue, what do you do? You may hop on the website or text if you're fortunate uh, via chat bubble on their website. You may call in old school, right, into a toll-free a uh, number and find yourself in an IVR. Um, so these are you know, very, very common interactions. They're the interactions that consumers or users have with a product or service, right? Interactions with a company or whoever is sponsoring that product or service, and it's how they get support for an issue or a problem. And more broadly, though, it encompasses how users and consumers learn and discover and manipulate and configure and maintain and hopefully fix uh, problems that they may be having with uh, their particular product or their solution. On the service side of the equation, right, we were talking about the recipients of service. Now let's talk about the givers or the providers of service, right? These are the interactions and behaviors involved in supporting that customer or that user. And typically there's customer support component, as I was just speaking uh, to, and depending on the product or solution, often a field service component um, where a worker would be dispatched to do a repair or perform some maintenance task on that deployed um, piece of equipment or that product or, or what have you. So when you take these together, this framework um, is such that, rather, it's a framework uh, that allows you to improve both sides of what we call the service experience management. And enterprises care very much about these topics because they affect customer satisfaction, operational efficiency, and overall profitability and other strategic objectives, including ESG, um, that an enterprise may have and may be measured on. And by the way, when I mention enterprise here, that's sort of shorthand for any organization, right? Profit, nonprofit, uh, local governments, state government, and so forth. But there's a problem with service experience today. It's fundamentally broken, and it's getting worse. Uh, we see several vectors that are impacting the way that service is delivered by enterprises. You may have heard of the Great Resignation. Um, for a little perspective, uh, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics published, I think last week, 
that somewhere on the order of 47 million people left their company and their role over the last 12 months. It's a pretty large number when you think about how many folks are exiting uh, and either finding new work or pursuing some other uh, activity. It's a lot of folks. Field service technicians, they're aging out. And the demographic is, is changing as well. Field service technicians often will stay put in a job for many years. The younger field service techs that are coming in often will transition between jobs very, very frequently. Sometimes several months uh, into a job, they'll, they'll switch jobs. They expect to be able to consume content uh, in a mobile setting. The way they learn, the way they um, diagnose and troubleshoot, this tends to be a, a demographic that's born of the, the internet uh, era. So uh, much different expectations in terms of how they, they get information and how they troubleshoot. These new field techs have to ramp more quickly and very often they're being asked to do more with very complex um, equipment or systems or solutions. And delivering contextual content in the moment um, can be very, very critical uh, and a powerful enabler on first time resolution rates. And with live support, uh, enterprises can provide visual support for both customers and for uh, field technicians. And this all helps to that uh, first time resolution. Very, very important. So Carrier has a take and a new approach on how the service experience can be improved upon, and, and we're doing this in multiple fronts. We believe that a high quality service experience is best served by a visual engagement aided with AR and AI. It's been said that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, maybe an AR enhanced annotation on a live video stream is worth 10,000 words. Um, pictures, pardon me, products are complex. Solutions are, are complicated, oftentimes parts and, and uh, components have quirky names you know, that users may not be familiar with. And describing this verbally over a support call is, is often untenable and very, very frustrating. Just doesn't cut it, typically. Obviously, showing rather than telling is often the best way to ensure clarity of understanding. Also, people have different learning styles, right? Some folks might want to read about a product or a, a, a maintenance procedure. Other folks want to watch a video. Um, still others prefer immersive interaction. Some interesting studies as well based on immersive interaction in terms of retention of knowledge. Um, it, it has a, a profound positive impact on that. And being flexible to accommodate this individuality and personalized content, it's a very powerful strategy for an enterprise to adopt. Also, immersive visual collaboration aided with augmented reality just advances that support experience uh, into a, a rewarding one. So what we are, Carry R, we have a platform, a surface experience platform that's a visual support platform um, that serves up augmented reality applications and capabilities. Um, powered by AI to make expertise accessible to employees, to customers, to field service techs, and more. This gives you a, a bit of a view here of the service experience management platform. At its core, service experience management enables reactive support, proactive support, and self-solve scenarios. For the frontline worker and service desk personas, Computer vision, object and part detection in 3D space, AR, live annotations that are anchored on objects in real space, they form the essential core of the platform. And since workflows are typically managed with service management tools like ServiceNow, um, having integrations is really a critical uh, core component and requirement of a service experience management platform. Uh, this helps maximize adoption and efficiency and flow. Software is indeed eating the world. Broad device support across mobile devices is sort of a given, as well as desktops. But more and more, we're seeing significant uptick in interest in wearables in the enterprise domain. Um, and invite you to come by our booth, 843. Here's the plug. Uh, we can show you what we're doing with Lenovo and their Think Reality A3 glasses. Um, very, very interesting stuff. 
We also see applications for drones. Uh, there, there are two categories where uh, deploying a drone and having a live video feed that people can collaborate with is very, very valuable. One is a safety concern where maybe you need to do a spot inspection uh, with bridges. They have something called uh, superficial inspections. Uh, you know, before you scale that tower, uh, be it a, a, you know, on an oil platform or uh, uh, a cellular tower, you know, getting eyes on directly uh, before you scale that tower can be very, very helpful. Uh, so those are safety concerns, but also if you're responsible, imagine you're a facilities manager for a large campus, maybe a university or some other corporate campus, multiple buildings, uh, sometimes dozens of buildings, being able to dispatch a drone, get a view of some equipment on top, perhaps it's a cold water chiller, very, very helpful and being able to pull in multiple parties to collaborate in the moment at literally seconds uh, notice can be super, super valuable uh, for enterprises. Now with all this usage on the platform, extracting and delivering insights in real time can extend the value of uh, the capabilities of the platform to the enterprise. More and more products are becoming connected, right? Tooling, equipment, uh, and so forth. And Status updates, uh, diagnostic results, uh, current state uh, can be delivered over the air uh, to a single pane of glass, an application, uh, to provide additional context um, for the user uh, to get valuable real-time information. Also, I'd say that integration with an enterprise's knowledge base becomes super valuable, and being able to tap into that in a same unified sort of coordinated experience very, very powerful and removes a lot of, uh, a lot of friction from the process of, of supporting an, an issue. Content. I can't overstate the value of content and the importance of content and being able to deliver it contextually in the moment in an appropriate way to the consumer of that content. And harken back to earlier in our presentation, those consumers could be unskilled sort of consumers, right? Or they could be field service technicians that have actually had coursework or have some level of skills. Being able to deliver the appropriate type of content in the moment that's suitable for their learning style is very, very critical. And this is a wide range of content. Sort of at the low end, you've got 2D uh, types of content, right? Pictures, video, text, knowledge-based articles. Um, sort of mid-range, you've got 3D content. Uh, think digital twin here, right? To interactive 3D, where you can actually engage with that digital twin and peruse and uh, explore the, the, the virtual product itself. And AR overlays, right? Right on top of the product or the system. All of these are different types of content supported by the Surface Experience Management Platform. And consumers, uh, range again from uh, ordinary customers with minimal skills all the way up to, to expert personnel. And again, it'll be consumed again across a broad spectrum of devices, mobiles, desktops, and more frequently wearables. And we support the full life cycle of that content through creation, curation, cataloging and indexing, and finally consuming and delivery of the content measuring how it's consumed, using that feedback to tweak the content, revise it, and uh, just improve it you know, through its life cycle. And you have to have a simple way, a simple ability to be able to do all of this with the appropriate tools uh, so that you can deploy this and redistribute very, very quickly as procedures evolve and as user preferences evolve as well. And lastly, there's a training aspect to all of this that comes into play with the service management platform. Um, and delivery of training content is going to be more mobile and more visually immersive and often delivered in the moment, just in time. So this platform accommodates live collaborative training as well as self-paced, self-guided methods, not to mention where you've got collaborative training, right? You've got a very expensive piece of equipment, uh, maybe centrally located. Uh, it's not uncommon, you know, for it to be in a large metro area. And instead of folks traveling in to, to work on, on training up on that piece of equipment, they can join remotely and uh, have a, a, a more dynamic session. So our platform suite supports three primary application capabilities. Carry our assist, 
uh, for live visual interactions, right? This is used to enable remote solve. And technically speaking, this is a high definition 720p video uh, along with high definition audio. Basically, it's a call, right? That can have any number of parties in that call. And this allows for proper AR annotation in 3D space uh, of the live streaming video. There are numerous visual tools uh, that we provide uh, to enable um, further uh, annotation on that live video stream, as well as recording capabilities, taking snapshots, videos, and so forth. And a session, as I mentioned, can be set up with any number of participants, any duration. Um, really, the sweet spot here is, again, for those customer support engagements. We'll talk about that in just a moment, as well as the field service technician support. Carrier Instruct provides self-guided, visually immersive content. And some examples of this include product tours, right? Learning more about how the product is put together, the various parts. Maybe those parts are articulated, right? They've got hinges or a drawer pulls out, or there's a removable unit. Um, as well as work instructions, uh, installation and configuration uh, procedures, and similar forms of content. And this can also include best practices related to that product or that solution, FAQs and other content. And typically, the personas here are going to be consumers as well as field service technicians, inspectors, auditors, people involved with compliance, right? Very, very common, especially in the energy uh, sector. And lastly, Insight uh, encompasses that next level of intelligent content about uh, a device that's delivered in context about that specific device. This is a connected product. And we can serve that up with deeper understanding and improved insights to the user. And the power of the platform is to ac accommodate this broad diversity of use cases and operational models. And while pretty common, they do vary across enterprises uh, a fair bit based on what vertical you're in, your geography, and, and so forth. Support experience can and often does transition from one to the other modality. Um, and this, uh, this proves to be very, very helpful and useful for, for enterprises. I'll touch on the use cases uh, as we're uh, winding down here. The service desk use case, and I also want to talk a little bit about the incentives for the actors inside of each of these use cases. Um, as I mentioned, they do you start to see certain patterns across enterprises, but there is a fair bit of variance um, across these use cases. So the service desk use case. Again, user has a problem, they call in, they reach out to the enterprise for support. Um, this is typically a very transactional sort of experience, right? The agent that's supporting that user is very much motivated and judged and uh, evaluated on how quickly they process that Either they resolve it or they uh, triage and escalate it into level two support. Typically, they'll run anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Um, all enterprises are incented to drop that, that hold time down uh, very much. It can be super challenging with complicated uh, products, especially those involving new technology. This was very, very common uh, 15, 20 years ago as more and more internet devices were delivered into the home. The field support service use case may be a little less familiar, right? Field service technician is dispatched. She encounters a problem. She's not familiar with the scenario or something just doesn't look right. So she reaches back into the organization. Typically, it's level two, level three support to get some additional help. This might be an engineer out of the, uh, the support teams, or it could just be you know, uh, another support expert in-house. Um, and the, the case here is they're using visual AR to get to the bottom of what this issue is. And they'll typically um, engage this pre-designated expert team. Uh, the, the motivation here, the incentive, is to get it right the first time. The cost of a truck roll can range anywhere from, say, $100 on up to several hundred dollars. Multiple of these truck rolls really gets expensive. Um, Another version of a truck roll is actually getting on a plane and flying somewhere to solve that problem. And, and we've seen customers that uh, that's basically they, their field, sor field service support model. Also, some industries have regimented time limits on how long that technician is on site. So if you can't solve the problem in X minutes, 
off you go to your next call, right? If you're the customer, you're left holding you know, the bag and you know, my problem hasn't been fixed, uh, it, it leaves a very frustrating taste in the mouth. And if fees are involved with that service call, well, for the business, payment is delayed and that affects cash flow for the business. The third use case for the service experience management platform is self-solve. We've talked a bit about that. Um, and um, of course, training. We, we mentioned this uh, before, and this kind of gives you a, a sense of the experience uh, from a carry hour perspective. We'll be doing demos uh, in the booth, 843, if you're interested. Here's a quick view. Um, the shameless plug, I guess, of assist and instruct here uh, for a field technician using Carrier and the service experience management platform. So I guess the finale I'd, I'd like to leave you with is um, a secure, scalable, flexible, and extendable service experience management platform um, we believe is truly the best strategy to support the use cases that enterprises have. These use cases aren't static, right? They're constantly changing. Initially, they may be looking to substitute one technology for another, but once they have these tools, they're able to actually disrupt the service flows. Perhaps instead of dispatching that field service technician initially, they enlist the, the customer or the, the person reporting the problem uh, to get eyes on the situation. So now you know before you go, uh, and you can really, if you have to make that truck roll, you make it the best darn truck roll ever. Um, and hopefully resolve that uh, the first time. We think a visual engagement platform enables you to meet users where they are in their support journey, provides connected insights, content with context, and enables new ways to deliver support more efficiently and effectively. And we know, after talking with literally hundreds of customers, that every organization, every company, every team is on a path uh, to improve how they serve their customers more effectively and, and, and more efficiently. And the SXM platform can accommodate organizations and companies wherever they happen to be along that path of transformation. So thanks very much. Are there any questions? Anybody? Yes. I was just curious in terms of, um, have you done studies as to how much more productive or um, with AI, AR powered uh, services versus, I guess, traditional? It's always good to, you know, have. We have. We've found that we've been able to shave uh, one third of the processing time off of a typical customer support call. Um, and the customers that call in, and uh, this is a bit more qualitative, but their response has tended to be, wow, you know, this is, this is great. I'm able to actually understand what it is that I'm doing now to this machine instead of just being talked through or given a, the page in a manual or something like that. That's a good question. Any other questions? Well, thanks for coming and uh, enjoy the rest of the show.